as some of you might know, uh, deep fakes were one of our focus topics with the HUM in 2020. Uh, so we're very excited to have our next speaker with us. Uh, Mark uh, Avenbly is a mechanical engineering student and a part of Duck Duck Goose, and he'll be talking about how we can recognize disinformation and expose deep fakes. Uh, welcome, Mark. Uh, Hello. Great. Hello. Uh, whenever you're ready, we can uh, start your presentation. Okay. Well, hi. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the question if this picture is real or fake. The answer, sadly, is not a yes or no answer. Well, my name is Mark. I study mechanical engineering at Delft University of Technology, and I have a great interest in artificial intelligence and deepfakes. And I and three of my friends are trying to develop uh, a startup uh, called Dr. Goose, in which we try to develop and implement explainable AI systems for the police and forensic researchers. And I will be sharing some of my findings and discoveries into the difficulties of detecting deepfakes and the problems to come. A lot has already been said about deepfakes, about how fast the technology is developing, about how they're already being used in India by the government to influence citizens' opinions, and the opposite, how the claim of deepfakes nearly toppled the government of Gabon, and how the biggest pain caused by deepfakes right now is how they're used as non-consensual pornography. Because there is no denying that more than 90% of all deepfakes online are pornographic, and 100% of those deepfakes are staring women as the fake. The worst is when these non-consensual deepfakes are used to blackmail, slander, or silence uh, female journalists or politicians. Luckily, there are also technological advances in the de detection of deepfakes. There are many papers proposing new detection methods using different AI architectures or reading biometric data from the fake. But few words have been said about the challenge to make these papers work in real life, because the boundary between reality and virtuality is more slippery and more vague than you might think. First, let's re-emphasize that the altering of media is not a new phenomenon. The moment the camera was invented, people started to manipulate the image, either to give them more color or to make them look brighter, or in the case of Joseph Stalin, to remove anyone whom he didn't like. Now, these days we're altering information all the time. We like to put filters over our photos, we like to change our background in videos, uh, and all this altering is only going to continue. As AI uh, continues to develop, so do deepfakes develop and the uh, altering possibilities. Now, let's look at a possible future use for some of these alterations. With everybody video calling these days, we are streaming multiple high quality videos all at once, and this is asking a lot of our review router. So many people suffer from lagging Wi-Fi or faltering audio. Now imagine that instead of sending a video over your uh, Wi-Fi, which contains a lot of information, you would only send the key points of your face, its uh, direction and its expression, uh, and the receiver with this information would reconstruct your image using a neural network. We could save a lot of data on that doesn't have to be sent, uh, but your image that you see is not truly real because the gap has been filled up by an AI. And what if, again, we altered those key points so that instead of uh, me looking at my notes, I would be facing the camera? Pretty smart, right? Now, we have a piece of video that is altered that it looks smoother, better, and sharper, and more human. But in the process, the image you're talking to is basically a deep fake. This was the picture you saw in the beginning. It has the same technical look and flaws of a deep fake. It might even use the same model. But we use it to get a smoother, closer experience to real life. And somehow, we still expect that machines will be able to tell the difference between this all, between real and fake. They might be able to tell the difference, but not between real and fake, because there is no real or fake in this world. There's only stacks of alterations happening in a certain context. A machine might be able to tell the alteration, but only we understand the context. So in our startup, me and my friends are attempting, we try to develop detection models for forensics video analysts. And we quickly ran into the problem that there is no yes or no answer. The solution that we see is that uh, one where machines and humans work together. If we bring more explainability, more accountability from the AI, instead of an output which is only real or fake, 
but an output which could say, I see a super resolution network. I see altered facial features because I see key point reconstruction. And let the human decide or whether in the context of the video, this is real or fake. This is the vision me and my friends are having for the future. I hope you found this story enlightening and uh, thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Uh, so if I understood uh, correctly, uh, with your, I think the second last slide, um, you were saying that it's not necessarily like, um, let's say a AI program that you're building, but uh, humans are very involved in this process of detecting the deep fakes. Is that correct? Yes. Um, uh, what we're developing uh, next to the program is a program which can respond uh, to its decision, uh, ac account for its decision, mm -hmm. why it thinks that it could be real or fake. Okay. And can you talk a bit, you mentioned that um, you want, you're also developing this um, for the police. Can you talk a bit about how that would be used and in what context? Well, um, interesting with the police is the, they could never use a system which uh, only says yes or no, because the police themselves have to account to the, the judge and to higher ups uh, as to why they make decisions they make. So they couldn't say to a judge, well, it's fake because our program said so. Mm -hmm. They have to explain themselves. Uh, and with the amount of deep fakes that might um, um, I even continue to pop up online, the detection they have to do becomes more difficult because there's more and more of them. So our program is supposed to point them at the right, the key points in which they can see why it is fake and immediately explain I see uh, this kind of network, I see this kind of pattern. And so mm -hmm. the police could uh, speed up their, their, their process in detecting videos. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah, I never thought about uh, this. Uh, yeah, when we had an event on facial recognition and we talked a lot about the police's use of facial recognition, but I actually hadn't thought about uh, police having to uh, deal with uh, these deep fake videos. So this is the first time I'm uh, I'm hearing about this. So it's interesting uh, to know that's also something that uh, that they're dealing with as well. Um, so is there something that uh, you're the most concerned about in relation to deep fakes? Something that you see kind of uh, in the upcoming near future? Well, um, yes, because. Uh, as I ex sort of explained in, the, in my presentation, there is not a real uh, yes or no answer to if it's fake or is, if it's real. There are many alterations possible. Um, and an AI system that has to detect them all is, is rather difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, in what kind of context does it happen? If, if we now have videos which are basically, well, uh, deep fakes that are enhanced by an uh, AI, it becomes more difficult and more difficult to, uh, well, catch anyone who wants to use it for uh, that. And it, it's this vagueness in reality and virtuality, which I'm, I'm afraid of that it's going, well, going to get more difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a question uh, coming in from the chat uh, from Seb. What's the difference between any manipulated photo and the deep fake? Why are we hearing this word everywhere these days when pictures have been tinkter, tinkered with since they have existed, which you also touched on a little bit yeah. in your presentation? Well, deepfake, it's, um, the term is a bit of, a, I guess, a hype. Uh, people like deepfakes because it speaks to them. Uh, it's about faces and, and they can recognize that. Uh, but it's true. Um, deepfake is it's not really well defined. Uh, and the other word you could use is uh, well, augmented uh, media or not augmented, altered media. Mm -hmm. But then again, all media is in a way is altered. I mean, the stream you're looking at right now is altered in all kinds of ways with nice backgrounds moving. Um, so that does not also not really helpful. Uh, well, and that's sort of what I touched upon. It's a really vague uh, boundary. Great. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's interesting to kind of try to wrap our minds around uh, this idea that you said nothing is uh, really real or fake. Um, I think that's like a kind of mental. Uh, yeah, it's a mental space that might take a while for people to actually wrap their heads around that. 
there's a question from uh, Bug, which has to do with uh, the police. Um, why not help identifying police officers who cover up their faces instead? Um, who cover up their faces? I think this has to yeah. do with, um, with, I think there was some recent, uh, I'm trying to remember the context, I think there was some recent protests where, um, where police were covering up their faces, police who were uh, maybe committing uh, some illegal acts against protesters. Uh, but I'm not also not sure how uh, deep fake technology could, uh, deep fake well, detection technology could help with this. I, uh, I could explain what it is that the police are using it for, uh, because the police have the, the problem is that um, online they're searching for, um, or they're trying to stop child pornography. But these days, when uh, they find a video containing child pornography, they're not sure if the child in this video is real uh, or a deepfake. Um, the deepfake child pornography is still illegal, but it requires a, a whole other approach uh, because you don't need to save a child, which is actually out there. So they do need this technology in order to see uh, what, what kind of what approach you're going to have to with this video. It makes sense. Okay, great. Um, there were two questions in the chat, so uh, maybe I'll let you uh, hop in there after we get off uh, in the live stream, and uh, you can answer some of those questions, um, maybe expand on the police question um, as well in the chat. Um, but now we're going to move on to our next speaker. Thank